We just spent a day at the dealership uh, getting our Li3 system back online. And I was gonna go over uh, what we discovered and also uh, make a correction for my video yesterday in which I stated that we had found a way to get this to charge on remote start. Uh, it turns out it wasn't exactly as I thought and I'm gonna explain how I made that mistake and why <clears throat> and then what was actually happening. So first, what I want to do is uh, somebody was having trouble with their Li3 system and trying to figure out what to test uh, because their Balmer wasn't, their, I, I think it's pronounced Balmer, uh, regulator wasn't coming on. And I was going to kind of go over uh, what could lead to that happening and then talk about what we had to do to fix ours today. So in order... Before I can explain how I made a mistake yesterday, first you have to kind of see the default behavior, the correct behavior if you uh, start your engine and what the charging profile looks like. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm still torn up for several, I'm sorry, the RV's still torn up for several projects. So it's a little dirty in here, but let's start this up. And what you see is that uh, we don't get a charge right away. What actually happens is uh, the Balmer needs to start up, the regulator starts, and it takes, I don't know, five, 10 seconds for it to kind of get going. And then it detects that it needs a charge and you see it ramping up here. And all of a sudden we start getting more and more of a charge. Now, uh, what was the, the reason that I thought we had found a way to remote start this is another phenomenon happens. If this fella is off for one reason or another, in our case, our regulator had failed. If this is off, then um, th then a system back here in your electric box, uh, there's a solenoid right here. And in some cases, it's a, uh, B it's a BIM 160. In our case, it's uh, some other solenoid that doesn't have a label, so I don't exactly know the product. But either way, they both behave the same. And so what happens is, and, and what confused me is you heard it just now click. What that did is it connected my chassis and my house battery, both sides. And for whatever reason, this has detected that one side or the other needs a charge and the other side of it uh, has some juice to provide. The point is, is what happened is we would remote start the vehicle and I thought the Balmer was booting up and uh, and then I would see a charge happening in our Li3. But what actually was happening is this was connecting our vehicle to the alternator that comes with the Ford and that was showing the charge. So my mistake was is that I was seeing a charge happen and on the uh, app, on the iPhone app. And I was thinking, oh, the Balmer was kicking in. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly since I'm saying it so much. The Balmer was kicking in. I thought the Balmer was kicking in and charging. Well, it turns out uh, my Balmer was broken this whole time and I, I was mistaken. Uh, even though I was testing and getting a signal back here, uh, the whole time my regulator was dead and that explains why, it, uh, uh, why I wasn't charging on our way home the other day in the rain. Um, I, I hadn't opened my hood to check. So, uh, I'll put a link so you can jump ahead. But what I do want to show is uh, for anybody whose Balmar doesn't come on, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it is on. Uh, but if, if yours isn't coming on, the first thing you need to do is this line right here that says ignition in ours. Uh, it's going to look something like this. And this is supposed to have a fuse in it, a one amp fuse. And it's, it's uh, separating the signal from the front of the van ignition to the BMS. So this should have, when your vehicle is on or the ignition switch is on, this should have a 12 volt signal in it. If you have a multimeter like I do, you test this and it should have 12 volts. There's another line that goes back. This is another line that goes all the way back under the vehicle, back to the second alternator. And this one also should have 12 volts. Uh, I worked with Lithionics and um, my understanding is this one shuts off if uh, your batteries fill up. Uh, the, basically this detects some sort of condition where the batteries are full, your BMS does, and this one will tell the alternator to 
uh, stop charging so it doesn't overfill. Uh, that was my understanding of the explanation from the documentation. Anyway, what you should detect is 12 volts back here. Well, in one of our conditions, I was not getting 12 volts back here. So I actually reached out to Lithionics and I was pretty sure I'd like fried this whole thing. They assured me that that wasn't the case and the guy was awesome to work with. And uh, it turns out I just, uh, I had a blown fuse. So it was this one amp fuse that was blown and replaced it. Everything's works rock solid up until this week. So let's go look at the other place. I have another video where I've broken it out and I'm not gonna pull it out now, but right here under your dash is a fuse panel. And you can see, not my finger, there's a red cable in there and that cable is from uh, Coachman. Now, I don't know if every vehicle is going to have this wire in the same place. The Ours is a 2020 chassis, 2021 Coachman. But this line goes up in here and plugs into one of the fuse ports. In our case, it was in the rain sensing port. Uh, and we're still trying to figure out if that's the right port. Uh, somebody else reported it was in F14, slot 14. Ours was in 16. And, uh, and I think we even have it in one right now. Either way, all of them were providing a 12 volt signal to this line I just talked about in the back. They were all working. So this whole time, uh, we thought the problem was this signal line. Fuses on the other end of this line had burnt out once. So we get it all fixed. I was testing the 12 volts back here. We still weren't getting a charge. I thought I was getting a charge, but it was kind of low. It turns out it was the alternator. So let's go look at what the Balmer, Balmer is supposed to look like if it's working. So I cut the engine in order to make it possible for uh, you to hear me. But what I want to show is, is if everything is working, then there's an LED on the top of that device. And just the fact that it's on lets you know that at least it's receiving a 12 volt signal. Now it also needs to uh, display certain numbers on there, one of which is the voltage at which it's charging at. Uh, but just having that voltage, that meter on, that LED on, means that uh, it's working at all. So you should, you should get a 12 volt signal from up here all the way back to back here. And then from here, it'll wake this fella up. In our case, you know it's on, uh, we have a blinky light for what I believe is I actually don't know what this box is, but I know when it's blinking that there's a 12 volt signal back here. Uh, I can't tell if that's a some sort of box that's a signal to the Firefly panel for the awning or uh, what that is. Um, they don't really label much back here. There's some relays over here that also get 12 volt signal when when the uh, these these get signal when this line has 12 volts, but I don't know what those go to either. But in our case, I know that we are getting 12 volts back here if this light is on. Um, if I didn't have that light, then uh, I'd have to have a multimeter out to test this. All that to say, if I'm getting 12 volts into this, that LED up there on the MC614 should be on. So I hope this helps the next guy. Uh, Ultimately, we haven't figured out a way to get our unit to run uh, when it remote starts. We've got to find a signal up there that is a 5 amp fuse. I'm hoping to find one that they're already, since they're fused for 5 amps, find something that's already a 5 amp fuse and see if it's on when, uh, when we remote start. But the other day when I thought we were getting a charge on remote start, it turns out that our bomber was down, broken, and so the, the solenoid back here I just showed you detected that it was uh, dead on that side and needed a charge and that the vehicle was providing that charge. So the whole time I thought it was working, uh, our entire Balmer was down and um, we weren't getting a charge after all from remote start. So bummer. Uh, but anyway, um, our whole system is wired and working now. And I can tell you if you want to not make my mistake, uh, it's pretty consistent that when the Balmer is working, uh, you'll get about 130 amps of charge. And that whole time I was getting 70 amps of charge. I thought that was a little weird, but 
uh, it turns out anytime I see 70, 80, anywhere around 100 at idle, uh, that's that's the alternator from the Ford. That usually means I've got a problem back here some for some reason. I know I only make videos when we have problems, but actually our system's been working great for several months. Uh, we still absolutely love the Li 3 system, and other than uh, blowing some fuses and losing our alternator a couple times, uh, <laughs> it's been pretty pretty pain free and it's a pleasure to use so uh, don't take any of me trying to help other people as a testament to us not liking it we love it um, and uh, I hope this video helps somebody who's diagnosing or troubleshooting their li3 system all right y'all take care bye